Hey, what's up, everybody? So, I had a, I had a Braves video ready to go out this week, and you know, I, had, I had to change it now because Ronald Acuna, their young superstar, unfortunately, tore his right ACL last night, uh, making a play in the outfield. So, a devastating blow to the Braves uh, for a team, especially that, that hasn't played that well. It's underperformed this year, but they're in a division that's for the most part, underperforming. So it's still a tight race in the National League East, and it's still kind of wide open. So, you know, what do they do now at this point? Do they do they add some reinforcements here and really try to go for it? And and, and honestly, do they have enough firepower to compete with the Giants, the you know, the, the Padres and the Dodgers? They're going to have to make quite a few moves, in my opinion. But, you know, Freddie Freeman's going to be free agent. Do they bring him back next year? Or do they try to get in the younger, more dynamic first baseman? So there's some decisions to be made there. And but figuring out what to do now is an option. And, and this is the second kind of devastating blow that they've had in the outfield. Marcelo Zuna, obviously, with his domestic abuse situation, is terrible. Um, and now Ronald Acuna being out for almost a year because of a serious injury. So what do they do? So I'm, I'm proposing three trades here. And... To help them recoup, because they've had issues in the pitching rotation and, and, and the, in the uh, the bullpen as well, and these kind of trades kind of represent that. So, you know, I would still consider a Chris Bryant. Like I said, if they could pry Ian Happ away at the same time, I would I would be all over that. Or if they can just do a trade for Ian Happ, you know, I know they've got Austin Riley and some 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 other guys, but Chris Bryant would be a huge addition to the team. Plus, he gives some versatility. He's in field, plays outfield. He could even play first base if Freddie Freeman doesn't return next year. So that's an option there, too. But let's go over the trades. The first trade involves the Detroit Tigers. And so the Braves would acquire Matthew Boyd, their left-handed starting pitching ace, and Robbie Grossman, their switch-hitting versatile outfielder, both of which I think are under control until next year, and not for agents until 2023. So they would get a year and a half of control to see how well it works. I think both of them, particularly Matthew Boyd, could use to change the scenery over to the National League. I think he would be better. He's having one of his better years this year as a Tiger. And Grossman's been pretty productive and solid this year. So Grossman would help the outfield depth problem now. And he's been relatively healthy too. So I think he'd be a good addition to that lineup. Just give it some versatility too. And Boyd would be a welcome addition to the rotation, particularly with Soroka being out now too with the Achilles and just kind of having some issues. I know Cole Hamill's doing a showcase coming back. But in all honesty, like Boyd is already in season. I would go with Boyd over Cole if I were, you know, Anthopolis. So, but... We'll see what he does. I, I, I do think he'll probably make a move or two. How significant? We don't know. But this here helps address the pitching and the outfield. And so in return, they would ship over Kyle Muller, their number five prospect, the left-handed pitcher. That would probably be, that'd be the biggest piece to eat. Michael, Michael Harris, their number nine prospect, an outfielder. And Freddie Temok, their number ten prospect, the right-handed pitcher. Yes, three top tens, but they're getting two major league starters in return. Uh, with a year and a half of control each. So that justifies three top tens. So that's trade one. Trade two involves the uh, Texas Rangers. So Braves will be acquiring Joey Gallo, their power hitting lefty, uh, power hitting lefty uh, in right field for the Rangers, and Ian Kennedy, one of their veteran relief pitchers. And then you know, the first trade addressing the rotation in the outfield, this one addressing the bullpen in the outfield. And again, Gallo, I mean, he's got a strikeout issue, but I think if you're having moving him over to a lineup like the Braves, which, which is stronger and more uh, you know, diverse and athletic than the Rangers are, would be, I think would be uh, help cut down the strikeout totals and improve his overall performance at the plate. And, you know, Kennedy's been a, reliever, uh, a dependable reliever for quite some time now, so you add him to the mix in the bullpen, it gives him another, another reliable one. So, in return, William Contreras goes back as a catching prospect. Kyle Muller again. I don't see any of these trades happening without Kyle Muller, to be honest. If they could pry him away without it, pry these guys without giving up Muller, that's a good move on the top of this one. That's a good GM. And, and Troy, Trey Harris is their third piece. He's their number 13 prospect in outfielder. So I think this is a fair trade. And I generally don't go, I don't generally do the trade values website with the numbers and all the stuff because anytime you have an injury like this, needs change, people overpay. Period. So it wipes it generally wipes out the value indicators and all that stuff. But I see why people use it because it, it it is fairly accurate. But that's trade number two, and trade number three involves the New York Yankees. This addresses the outfield, the rotation, and the bullpen all in one. So they would acquire Davy Garcia, young starter, who I think at this point could use a change of scenery. 
and and the fact is the Atlanta Braves are much better at developing your pitches than the Yankees are, especially on the starting side. So I would get him. Clint Frazier, another outfield piece, and who's and who's not a free agent until 2025, like Davey Garcia, and Jonathan Lewisiga. This is the tough one to swallow because I know he's on the COVID list right now, but he'll be fine coming back. He's one of our bullpen, our, our relief, uh, elite relief bullpen arms. Reliable, hard throwing. He's just nasty when he's on. Him and Chad Green have been like the most reliable relievers on this team this year. So it would be a painful one to get him over there. But in return, they'd get Kyle Muller, obviously, the left-handed number five prospect. Bryce Bell, who's their number 12 prospect, the lefty hitting first baseman, which gives them flexibility should they want to move Voigt for some reason or whatever. And also they would get um, Michael Harrison, number nine prospect and outfielder. And again, these guys like the, like the you know Clint Frazier and uh, would help you know maybe a little bit give them. I think he can use a change of scenery too. I think wherever he goes, if he gets a starting opportunity, he'll shine. I think I don't. I think the Yankees have kind of poorly managed him. I've said this before too, but I think he I think he'd be just fine over in Atlanta, and it would help you know replace some of the frustrating non-production from guys like. Pablo Sandoval and then they're in and stuff like that. And, and you know, Loisa and Davey could help you know, maybe address some of the, the, the pitching frustrations with guys like Sean Newcomb and the Soroka being out. So they've had some issues on both sides of the field. And I think that trade would help offset and address a lot of them. Yeah, it would be a heavy price to pay, so the Braves might have to send another prospect in return, which I'd be totally fine with. But Clint Frazier, he's blocked. They, they have, they've done a poor job with him. Loisa, yeah, tough one. Davey, I think, is at best probably going to be a number four starter in the American League, at best. And he's struggling in AAA right now, so he might be a number three in the National League, but who knows. But I think he'd be a good piece to move over to Atlanta. So let me know what you think of these three trades, whether you think they're feasible, uh, whether you think they represent fair value. They address needs on both sides. You just need some more high-end prospects, too. So... And that's, that's why I do these trades, just knees on both sides. But now, striking while the iron's hot, like, you know, with a, obviously things change when you have a player like Okuni get hurt. Their needs change. Their, their, their moves change. So it'll be interesting to see what the Braves do over the next couple of weeks leading up to the deadline. We're under three weeks away, and, and they need another piece. And that losing him is a, is a blot. It's a body blow. It's akin to the Yankees losing Judge. You know, the Mets losing... Alonzo or Conforto, something like that. Yeah, you know, Red Sox losing Verdugo. Like, it's just these young, dynamic players. That's a tough one. It's a tough pill to swallow. So how do you re replace the production and kind of manage that loss while he gets healthy and comes back? And hopefully it comes back at full strength. That's the thing. And I think he will. He's young. He's only 22, I think. But I, I guess it's just going to take a little while now. It's going to stink not having him there. But I still think the Braves can make the postseason without him. But the moves that they make now are really going to help determine whether that happens or not. So let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.